Hi, my name is Ellie. I am one half of Triff Souls, and today I'm here to tell you all about the Wicklow Way. The Wicklow Way is one of Ireland's most iconic trails. It is a 130 km linear trail from Marley Park in Dublin down to Clonigal in County Carlow. We walk this trail from south to north over the course of five days. It follows mostly small roads, forestry tracks, and open mountain sides. Being the very first National Waymark Trail to be created, this is our final National Waymark Trail when walking all 42 of Ireland's trails. Starting at the southern end in the village of Clonigal, the trail follows small lanes until it turns onto gravel tracks and forestry roads. The southern section has a fair amount of road walking, and every now and again we would come to a rise and be able to see the mountains ahead of us. By late afternoon we passed the pub known as the Dying Cow, a staple of the trail. That evening we made it to the town of Tinnahili, our first and last major town of the trail. Hitting the trail again the next morning, we climbed up Ballycumber Hill, wading through ferns and sheep shorn grass. We walked some lovely off-road sections and then covered some ground faster on the paved bits. That night we made it to Muckla Hut, one of the three shelters along this trail, and pitched the inner lining of our tent inside it as a ward against the midges. The morning of the third day marked the start of the major off-road walking sections that the Wicklow Way is known for. As you step away from the hut, the path immediately starts an uphill climb and we spent the morning in the forest on logging tracks and boardwalk. After a couple of hours walking, we found a granite pillar beside the trail, which marked the halfway point of the Wicklow Way. Only a few hundred metres past there is Glen Malure Lodge. From here, the trail climbs up the south side of Mullacore, which features another hush you can camp at. This is one of the biggest climbs of the trail, and as we slowly made our way up and up, the views of the Wicklow Mountains just became more spectacular. On reaching the top, we were able to see Legnaquilla, the highest mountain in Wicklow, and then continued on to Glendalough. Glendalough is a very famous glacial U-shaped valley. Down on the valley floor it has two lakes and an ancient monastery founded by St Kevin. We followed the boardwalk along its steep slopes which brought us down to its valley floor. Passing through Glendalough village, the trail then takes an unassuming path off the road and starts another steep uphill climb. From here we walk through forests that skirt the village of Lara. These forests are made up of a beautiful mixed woodland featuring Scots pine, oak, ash and gorse. The quality of walking that evening was really fantastic and that night we camped at Busher's Gap Hut with some other walkers. On day four we walked from the Busher's Gap Hut to Knockery Youth Hostel covering about 27 kilometres. The first few kilometres alternate between lanes and forest tracks until we reach the side of White Hill. Following the boardwalk up and around Loch Tay we pass the monument for J.B. Malone, the founder of the trail. The trail then meanders over Jess and down towards Paris Court Waterfall. Around Paris Court the trail is a bit busier and we quickly made our way through to Cronewood and onto Glen Cree Valley. In Glen Cree Valley, the trail twists and turns with the river and we happily meandered along with it. Our final climb of the day brought us up out of this small valley to Knockery Youth Hostel. The hostel is a purpose-built building and a great place to finish that day. On our final day, we set off for Prince William's seat, from which we were able to look back and see most of the trail that we had just walked. We followed well-established trails across Two Rock and onto Fairy Castle. We had walked sections of this trail before as part of the Dublin Mountains Way and so knew the area pretty well. Cresting the final hills and seeing the city in front of us made the final five kilometers fly away beneath our worn soles. The transition from mountain to city is surprisingly quick. And suddenly we were in Marley Park at the end of a three year journey and five day trail. This is one of Ireland's most iconic trails. It is pretty strenuous and we recommend walking it from south to north as the further you go, the better the walking gets. We'd recommend hiking shoes or boots and lots of planning ahead as there are almost no towns along this route. Camping is definitely possible along this route with some proper planning. For more information on all we just said, make sure to check out the description where we've linked our full length video, blog post, free maps and more. As always, these videos are made possible by the amazing people who support us on Patreon. It's through their support that we can keep making videos, so I'd like to say a huge thank you to everybody who supports us. This week I'd like to say a special thank you to Peter Galvin, Werner Lang and Tempest Ranjit. Thank you guys so much for supporting us and thank you to everybody over on Patreon. And as always, I will see you in our next video.